Thank you. It's um, a bittersweet day. I'm surprised say. you say the least. I really appreciate the Of course. I tell you, the first mayor of Newton did the Well, <laughs> don't know what was wrong with them, but I'm glad to be here for this one. You phrase that correctly. <laughs> Let's look at Chris. We'll look at Chris together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, beautiful. That if you want at the beginning, you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the floor. Okay. Highland Jazz, under Hank's leadership, has provided performance opportunities to professional jazz musicians who live in the Boston area. Moreover, he has showcased emerging artists from the Berklee College of Music and the New England Conservatory. Additionally, Hank invited young musicians from local middle and high schools to open the concerts giving them the opportunity to perform before a serious jazz audience. In grateful recognition of City of Newton, Hank Solomon's love of jazz, and 16 years of tremendous jet dedication to bringing the joy of jazz to Newton. It is only fitting and proper that on behalf of all the residents of the City of Newton, I, Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller, express our gratitude to Hank Solomon. Jackie is here too. Jackie's Jackie's off four. I met you through her. Uh, the best. 
You're the number one fan, Marion Mandel. Okay. Yes, the best of the best. Okay, now that you're in the front row center, the best of the best. we're ready to go. I'm God, the best I, uh, of the best too, but anyway. I'm going to have to sit down, which is not my, cust my custom, but... Uh, and I love your socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to auction them off. Throw her a fish! I'm going to auction them off. <clears throat> oh, this is going to be that kind of an afternoon. Uh, I'm joined by my wife and my family and the obviously very dedicated volunteers of Highland Jazz and its original founders and everyone else in welcoming you to this celebratory gala concert celebrating 35 years of many musical memories. Um, who would have thought that an idea conceived as an adjunct to a restaurant operating in Newton, Abruzzi and Abruzzi Jr., that was Mario Bocabella, oh, who couldn't yeah. be here today, Mario. surgery. Oh. Uh, and Nancy Alavansky, my predecessor, started in the backyard. Nancy knew about music, Mario, Mario knew about the kitchen. And to him, that was something that might some add some value to the people wanting to eat. And it sure did. Uh, but that was, you know, 35 years ago. Nancy had to move to essentially 17 different venues in and, in and out of Newton in order to be able to keep this thing running. Uh, money was always, always in, in the early days, I'm sure, a challenge and a whole series of things of creating a nonprofit, volunteer based organization. Um, and it just isn't one person. Obviously, it takes, it takes a village, to, as is mostly said, uh, to be able to mount something that has this kind of lasting value. And so I just want to spend time. First of all, before we start that, uh, important for me to say that we are dedicating this concert to the memory of four people who passed away in the past year, two of whom were part of our most stalwart kinds of musical talents in the New England jazz scene vocalist Rebecca Paris, and my dear friend, Paul Pradnex. Uh, I'm sure many of you have that sentiment that I did, because I can, I can just picture now on what became our Sunday afternoons, looking at Paul on a day that he wasn't scheduled to play here, but he was a serious subscriber anyway, kind of walking across with his radiant smile, uh, with Caroline, his wife, who I hope is here. Um, anyway, it was, it was always something indelible. I mean, obviously for me, it had a lot of major memories since Paul played at my wedding. Um, a whole series of things of bar mitzvahs. Uh, and just was in our life in a lot of different ways. So he is, he is missed. Uh, I, I'm really very, very sad about uh, his passing and obviously Rebecca. The two of them worked here together. We've had them on stage together here at Highland Jazz over the years. Um, she was an enormous kind of talent and spirit and, and in more recent years her illness kind of impacted you know, the way she was able to perform and I'm sure she had that kind of spirit that was enduring and indomitable. Additionally, I reach out to this community for people oddly closely within the past, in December and February, who passed away, that were meaningful to this series in this city, and that would be Linda Plout and Susan Kaplan. Well, this is a Newton Bay series. It radiates all over New England. There are people here from Pawtucket, from Rhode Island. I'll throw in my daughter from New York. No, but there are a lot of people from many different towns. So it's not just Newton based, it's been all over. And something has resonated with all of you who, who really uh, reflect what, in my mind, is your 
your, your intellect, you're in a great place. You know you're hearing great music. And that says it all. And respectful of the artists, which is key. How many times you go to public performances and everyone's talking over cocktails or something else, including the staff, and just undermining the very talent that's in front of you. That grates me no end to have that happen, but obviously it continues, it continues to do that. Um, so that, those are kind of people that I, that I just want to be able to reflect on some of the people that I want to be able to recognize or acknowledge and, and please allow me, because this isn't just Newton, these are people that are impacted all over the, all over the area. But whatever honor I received is their honor. We are a village in that respect. My wife, who's been right at my side for all this time, who's helped in the front of the house, been dedicated. She's a doo-wop fan, so and that takes that takes a lot of doing. <laughs> is that for doo-wop or for my wife? <laughs> uh, my children and grandchildren and extended families. For all the, the volunteers, the older, the volunteers who were here before me, certainly Nancy Alamansky, Lolly Selenko, uh, Vladimir and Galina Zilberstein. We, we just found out that, again, someone else just passed away within the past four months who came here religiously. We used to get one of these, the uh, MBTA rides from Watertown to come. We used to stay with her late at night, so they showed up, we used to take her home back to Watertown. And sadly, I just found out today that she just passed away a month ago, so I really appreciate her, you know, basically all, all her confidence in us and coming and her loyalty. Um, my, the range of people are really are endless. We have Keith, who's our sound guy, took over our sound system here for a number of years ago. Edward, my extended family son, who takes care, who takes care of the lights. Uh, not too many people who do lights or are postdoctorates from Harvard. You know. <laughs> uh, my son and son-in-law, my, uh, grand, my granddaughters, my, the children that are involved, Peter and Gretchen and Sadie and Eliza and Elizabeth and Jacqueline. Um, you know, I, I just could go on and on and on and extending my appreciation and gratitude for all they've contributed to really enable us to present these, this series for the time that we've been allowed to do it. I, I really am honored and, and appreciate the fact that we've been able to have this great role in shaping things and keeping alive.
Oh, listen, Nancy never stops. He's a professor at Lovely College for many years. She runs, she's a watercolorist, has painted a lot of jazz artists. She's, got, she's really uh, hosting Newton Open Studio starting next week. Starting next week. What I neglected to say, and it's available, I have to remind, remind people of all these prior concerts, that Nancy spent a diligent amount of time putting together an electronic book on the first 20 years of Highland Jazz, inter, interposing what were YouTube things, which may, not, may or may not be available now, but all kinds of things that really relate to the history in detail. It's a laborious job. And it's completed, and it's not, it's not expensive. I don't know what it is. But, oh. okay. okay, so I checked <laughs> this morning, and it's still there. $5.95, you can download a copy of this book. It's the story of the 20 years that I ran Highland Jazz, and it's called the Echoes of Highland Jazz. And I passed out some flyers about it. And it's not difficult. Get a kid or a neighbor to download it for you if you have a computer you know, issue. So uh, what I've done is I've included 115 musical links. So as you're reading along, and it says, now here is Rebecca Paris singing Over the Rainbow, which just happens to be one of the tunes that I thought she was so magnificent. So you click, and it takes you to YouTube. It's not a video because we didn't have that. It will be a picture of Rebecca and then you can listen to the tune. And it is really a treasure. So, and I make 60 cents on each one. <laughs> so, uh, this is an important thing for you. $5.95. <laughs> and then there are stories, some of which you would probably not know about this one and that one, and a list of all the musicians who who played for us in those 20 years, which is really very impressive. Some of the links to their websites may be dead now. Some of them have passed on, so those websites probably don't exist. But the musical links are all there. And um, you can also see a ton of photographs that I downloaded and included in the book, and some of my sketches, and it's $5.95. Get a kid to help you. You <laughs> must read this. And congratulations again to this wonderful guy. Thank you. Thank you. I can't tell you the number of times I had to call Nancy out of the blue with our the SOS. Because uh, she's had all the history and she's endured and, and encountered all the kinds of issues and challenges. So that collaboration has been great over the years, initially through the transition and then after that. A couple of announcements I just saw that I'm not, I'm not remiss.